Welcome back to Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. This one is entitled, Printing Started! Printing Complete! So obviously this has to do with Lexmark printers. Nothing to do with Lexmark's 567. You see I'm in a different location. I'm actually recording this on the same day as I recorded the previous five. But the way the sun is coming in, and I know this isn't the greatest shot because the sun is kind of half on me in that. You got the pool in the back, so that's kind of nice to see. So I figured we'll just roll with it and deal with uh, the poor image quality because it's more about the story. So there were a couple things. Let me just check my paper here. Yes. So the first one was uh, when I was at the Wiz. Um, 1990. Eight. We'll give it a good 1998. There was a Compaq branded computer, C-O-M-P-A-Q, which then was bought out by HP and then ultimately folded. Anyways, uh, there was a Compaq computer that was sold as a bundle. The bundle included like a 15-inch CRT monitor. Remember the time frame here? And the computer itself, you, obviously your mouse and keyboard, <clears throat> and it included a color inkjet Lexmark printer. I forget the model. We did sell Lexmark printers at the Wiz, but we did not sell that model. Well, anyway, because of the way the Wiz was, our car, uh, <laughs> and the way it was run, um, we would sell off the floor models when the item went discontinued. And as such, we ended up selling off, or some other salesman sold off the floor model without the printer, either because he didn't know that it came with it, or it didn't work, or it was out of ink, or I don't know. We gave them a significant discount, even though it was probably still well overpriced. That's why when you'd walk out of the store, the uh, uh, security guard was there with, uh, you know, with a rubber stamp and pad, and he would take your receipt, look at it, make sure that's what you bought, and he'd mark it taken. Ha ha ha. <laughs> because you were taken. <laughs> Actually, it said MDSE, period, taken. But uh, anyhow, that was the story. So, uh, they, uh, the printer was left behind. So we had something coming up. Maybe we had the big wigs coming in, something, and everything had to have a price sign. So they said, make a price. They told me, make a price for that printer. I can't. What do you mean you can't? What are you telling me you can't do your job? Ah! I said, no, you don't understand. That's not an item that we sell. What do you mean? Why is it here? It was sold as part of a bundle with a compact computer. It's discontinued, and whoever it was sold off the floor model without the printer. It's not an item we sell. It does not have a SKU number. I can't enter it in the system and get a price for it. We couldn't even make a manual one. Nothing. It just came up with the price in the system, and that was it. You'd print it out. I said, I cannot make a price tag for it. It's not in the system. Well, take it and put it in the warehouse on the other side. The other side of the store. So we were in the home office, I was in the home office department, where we sold computers, telephones, answering machines, cell phones, pocket organ organizers, they were a thing then, printers, scanners, all that kind of stuff like that. Oh, that's a lion in the window. Might have to take care of him. Pardon, just a moment. Sorry about that, all taken care of. So, um, like I was saying, the warehouse or stock room, I should have really said, was on the other side of the store. So I was on this side of the store. You had to go up basically a flight of stairs to get to the music department, at which point you'd walk across there, and then there were two flights down. The whiz, main part of the whiz was in the basement of this part of the building. 
So anyways, um, another guy I worked with, his name was Chris, grabbed the printer and he said, all right, let's go. So we start walking because we were otherwise done for the night. So we're walking over to the other, to music, and walking across music, and we get to the top of the two flights of steps. And Chris said, guys, you think? Should I do it? And he was kind of holding the printer like he wanted to throw it. Yeah, man, do it, do it. You ever see that where, like, everything's going, like something's going to happen sort of spectacular of some kind, and it immediately goes slow motion? But this was not video editing tricks. This was real life. And I watched in slow motion as he took this printer and fucking threw it. And it sailed through the air. And there was a landing between the two flights of steps. You know, you go down the flight and then there's the flat part. You walk across that and down the next flight. So anyways, he heaved this thing and I watched in slow motion. And it hit the landing. The sound, I can't even describe what the hell that was like. It was like, boom, 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 ka, 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 ka. Just everything. Every piece of this printer disintegrated. The, the thing where you open it up to put the ink in, that door fucking broke off. The paper tray fell out of it. This broke off. The buttons popped out. Just the thing fucking exploded. <laughs> and we had a great laugh. And somebody put it in the stock room. And that was the end of that printer. That was... <laughs> that was printing complete for good. <laughs> if you put ink in it, and we had the power adapter, which we didn't. That just was thrown out or something. I don't know. It would have worked, I'm pretty sure. It had no no pages on it. It was otherwise new. Handled. Dirty, but new. But then there was another Lexmark printer. When I was doing freelance uh, computer repairs, a guy called me up. He said, uh, having a problem with my printer. And I'd been there and would give this guy computer lessons and fix shit and whatever that was there. I said, okay, what time's good for you? Four o'clock? Sounds good. Okay. So I went over there. Can't remember the guy's name. I could look. I have an old list I could look at. Probably figure his name out from that. I remember what the basement looked like. He had it in the basement. And he had the computer on a desk small desk but the printer didn't fit on that so he had like a like a card table something like that small table next to the desk and the printer was on that so um, I said what's the problem you're having he says well print something inkjet printers have an encoder strip and an encoder wheel, or at least they did back in these days. This was in a similar time frame as, as the Wiz, um, maybe as late as 2000, but no later than that. I don't remember the model of the printer. Uh, I guess it was used heavily. What, uh, what the printers have is like an encoder strip and also an encoder wheel. It's a piece of clear plastic and it has very, very fine black lines on it. And the print head that goes back and forth, if you have an inkjet printer, you know, you that thing that goes back and forth, has a reader, and it reads the encoder strip, and it can count how many of those black lines have passed so it knows where the head is, and therefore knows what drops of ink to spray down on the page. And as far as the encoder wheel, it's a round piece of plastic with the marks around that, and there's a reader there, so it knows how far to advance the paper so the ink goes in the right spot on the page. 
That's the rough explanation of how it works. These encoder strips in time would become dirty. Sometimes they could get scratched. Uh, other times they'd become detached when somebody was changing ink. And it was usually on two like spring-loaded metal arms that would keep it very tight. But sometimes they'd hit it just the right way, it would pop off. And usually you could pop it back with no harm done. But that wasn't very common. They generally stayed there because they were held tight. But they would get dirty. And not just dirt and dust most times, but what it actually was, was overspray of the ink. If you had an inkjet printer for a very long time, and it has a cover you could open, like these older school ones did, you would see a, a haze, a residue in there, blackish, reddish, bluish, sort of haze in there. And a lot of times if you wipe your finger on it, it will come off on your finger and it wasn't dirt or dust, you could just go like that and would get rid of it. That was ink. Because when it hits the page, microscopic droplets bounce off the page and get airborne inside the printer and they settle. Well, it settles on the inside case of the printer and also on the encoder strip. These Lexmark printers, what happens with them when the encoder strip would get dirty is it couldn't get a good read, so it gets erroneous data. And instead of sending the printhead in a normal jing, 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 you know, or however fast it went, it would send this thing at extraordinarily high speed. And it would go jing, zhip, and it would hit the end of the printer, slam into it, and the printer, as God is my witness, jumped off the table. That was mostly the end of the story. <laughs> the printer jumped off the table and hit the floor. No damage occurred to it in that particular instance because it didn't have fall, it farted fall. But uh, nonetheless, that's what happened. <laughs> I had never seen that before. I have heard these printers and I've seen them on a table, like, you know, really jerk when they would slam into the stop at the end. So whatever the firmware that they had on these things was pretty poorly written. There's no reason it should ever error out like that. I mean, that's maybe they did that so you knew that was the end of the printer. But a lot of times it wasn't because you could clean the encoder strip. It's a fly. Clean the encoder strip and it would be just fine again. Um, this time it wasn't having it. I cleaned the encoder strip, but it was just done for. They were. These were. I seem to remember like Z31, Z51, and Z71 were the model numbers on these printers. And they were, they weren't bad. They really weren't bad. They had respectable enough resolution. They had expensive or more expensive ink cartridges than others, but they were fairly decent size. So you probably got, I don't remember what the, how many milliliters of ink were in them, but they used to rate that. I don't know if they even say anymore. Anyways, um, milliliters, I think. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, the, 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 the ink was kind of expensive for them, but they did have the old school HP design where the printheads were part of the cartridge. So every time you change the cartridge, you got a new printhead. And that did ensure perfect printing every time. And I hated that when they switched to... Uh, permanent print heads like the Epson's always had. Always hated Epson inkjet printers. But now they're all doing that because it's cheaper. <laughs> but anyway, that was the end of that guy's printer. Uh, it was just... I, I think I got it to print a page and then it fucked up again. So something else was also going on with it. Anyway, that was the story. 
That one also printing complete for the last time. And that is going to wrap up this episode of Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. Uh, what do you think? Do you like this location? I kind of like it. It's just not conducive to recording. <laughs> In broad daylight when the sun's right above, maybe. But even so, then I'm going to be sweating bullets out here. So I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think about that. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. That's a mollusk now. Huh. He never does. Oh, there's a bug. That's why. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.